Hi there, Lloyd Macedo. Speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com. Who is Lloyd Macedo and think personal branding? All right, I just finished watching the bodybuilding Mr. Olympia 2018 finals. My goodness, it was fucking crazy. Seriously. You know, I normally never put up videos with regards to bodybuilding, but this one I was following so bloody closely. You know, Phil Heath has been dominating the Mr. Olympia stage. Initially, he was really amazingly good. He had the perfect physique, the three-dimensional, you know, muscle structure. If you look at Phil Heath on, even on any of these videos, especially the Mr. Olympia videos, and compare him to any of the contestants, his muscles would be just popping out. I mean, each and every muscle of his body, from his shoulders, his delts, his traps, his um, uh, everything, everything. I, I mean... And especially his back, uh, he was built like a perfect, uh, you know, Marvel character. Many people try to come and compete with it. Kai Green nearly did it, but didn't succeed. Sean Roden nearly came close and didn't do it. You had many people like uh, even Martinez. He almost did it, but then they faded away. Everyone was waiting for Kai Green to come this year. Everybody was waiting for Kai Green. Kai Green... The problem with him, he just keeps fucking irritating people with his... If you ask him a bloody question, like, are you competing this year? He goes on a philosophical rant. The actual philosophy of life, if you see the light with the trajectory of limitlessness, it comes down to the inner being. of He talks so much of shit. You know, sometimes you think like, Kai, just shut the fuck up, man. You're an amazing brand with this long hair and this amazing body. Either you compete which is why people love you so much with your amazing physique and your your personality on stage. But please shut the fuck up when it comes to that rant of, you know, philosophy. You're not a philosopher. You're not a, uh, you know, speaker. You're not a writer. You're not a person who is known for his content. You're a person who is known for his physique. Stick to bloody showing your physique. That's about it. So Kai Green didn't turn up. Okay, even though they had the uh, People's Choice Award. Now came the Mr. Olympia and everyone was waiting for Big Rami, the big news. Big Rami is going to knock out Phil Heath. To everyone's shock and surprise, everybody's shock and surprise. He followed the same, um, you know, strategy that he had. And his strategy was always keep posting pictures of himself before the event. And before the event, he would keep posting how big he is and how amazing he is with the lighting and the filters. So he would look like a mass monster, like bigger than the Hulk. So, you know, everyone was like, wow, Big Rami is going to win. The hype train was Big Rami. Everyone was with Big Rami. Everyone believed Big Rami would win. Even I thought Big Rami would make a dent. I was hoping, but then the question was, maybe William Bonac would do it. Because William Bonac, amazing presenter. Okay, so... Everyone was thinking, uh, Phil Heath here, Big Rami, well, he came in second, so he's going to knock this guy off. William Bonac, close. Roly Winkler, people actually didn't believe he could do it because there was a lot of refining, a lot of conditioning, a lot of, you know, like they say, dry to the bone kind of condition. So, Roly Winkler is a mass monster. People knew that he's not going to win because the proportion and the structure... So it was either William Bonac or Big Rami. And Big Rami, because of size, he only had to come down really shred, uh, shredded and ripped and conditioned. So everyone's waiting for that. And everyone knew that Phil Heath had this big, massive bubble gut, okay, which was a big problem. And he said it's because of, uh, you know, uh, he had a hernia and his intestines are hanging out fine. I think the drama actually started at the pe press conference. At the press conference, it was uh, Cedric McMillan versus, uh, uh, what do you say, William Bonac. They were exchanging barbs of, you know, opinions. But then, to my big surprise, absolute surprise, it was this guy, Phil, you know, um, Sean Roden. Sean Roden attacking Phil Heath. Okay, your friend, uh, double bicep is crap. Your, uh, you know, your back double pose is crap. I was like, Sean Roden, just shut the fuck up, man. The maximum you came was second once upon a time, then you came fifth. And, you know, what are you talking? 
I'm, I'm, I'm being honest here. I was like, Sean, just shut the fuck up, man. You have not done anything, not achieved anything. Why the fuck are you talking? And then he went on with, you know, I kept notes. I kept looking at notes. I was like, go fuck yourself. What are you going to do with notes? And you should have seen Phil Heath's face uh, in some of the camera angles. Phil Heath was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he kept doing these expressions. And if you see the conference, if you see the conference with everyone, Phil Heath, infamously, which he is going to be quoted and which every troll on the planet is going to attack him. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Uh, talk is cheap. He kept saying that. And then he went personal where he said, you look like that that character from Winnie the Pooh. What, what, what's that character's name? Uh, Winnie the Pooh characters. Okay, that, that donkey. What, what, what's that donkey's name? E Eeyore. Yeah, he looked like Eeyore. I didn't know what was the Eeyore. I knew the donkey's character, but, you know, Eeyore. I was like, what the fuck is the Eeyore? I googled it in Eeyore. And I was like, fuck, he's right. But come on, that's that's not a nice thing to say. You look like Eeyore, you know, at the back. And, you know, I was like, fuck, this is getting personal. And the problem with Phil Heath is he has been making, maybe because people have been really rude to him. People have been trolling him. People have been pointing especially at his midsection and attacking him there, that he also started to get really rude and attack his, attack his uh, you know, critics and trolls. I don't blame him because even I get lots of them. Like people keep saying, what the fuck is on your face? What the you know, shit is on your face? Oh, okay, fine. So he kept giving back to them. But I just felt that Phil Heath was getting overconfident and it happens to everyone. He was getting overconfident, absolutely overconfident where... It was like, talk is cheap. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. And that kind of made even my blood boil. I was like, hmm. so you think you're won by default. Phil Heath approached the whole competition as if he had already won it. I understand going to a competition with that belief that you have actually won, training like you actually won. But then when it gets to your head, it's a bit too much. And that is what happened to Phil Heath. It just got to his head. I, I just want you to see the conference where he sits like, hmm, yeah, oh, yeah, hmm, yeah, whatever. And when you see that, you realize, man, this guy is overconfident. He is overconfident. It has gone to his head. And that was the point where everyone's like, man, this guy should lose. Man, this guy should lose. And on the day of uh, the competition uh, and the, you know, the initial stage where they were evaluating everyone's physique, the entire internet was a buzz. They were just, oh, Sean Roden's physique, Sean Roden's physique. And I was like, what the hell happened? And then I, I saw the video and I was like, shit, this guy has come amazing. Now, when you compare Sean Roden to Phil Heath, um, shoulders, okay, you can say both of them are more or less equal. The bicep tricep region, it is Phil Heath without a doubt. Uh, if you're talking of chest, uh, Phil Heath, you can give the points to him. But the midsection, oh my goodness, the midsection, without a doubt, it was Sean Roden. He is, his waist was so bloody slim. His, his abs are popping out. It's like, like, dot. it was just like, you know, uh, what's his name? Rolly Winkler, really powerful abs. They were looking amazing. And then his legs were like, whoa, his legs are coming out really nice. He was dry. He was completely dry. You, you could see his glutes you could see the separation between his hamstrings and um, his quads it was like oh my goodness what from where did this guy just suddenly come up like this everyone was talking about and everyone and you know when when i looked at phil heath i was mentally imagining this like imagine he knows he has lost he feels he has lost how is he going to face now if i was phil heath and I just saw what I just saw. I would be, in the night, I would be dead. I would be like worried. I would be scared. I would be afraid. And I would know deep down in my heart, I've already lost. And that's exactly what happened. Phil Heath knew that he actually lost. He knew he lost. That is why when he came to the contest, I want you to watch it. Whenever he kept hitting the pose, he was, <sighs> he was huffing and puffing. He, every pose, he was, <sighs> and every time he was huffing and puffing, his, his, his gut kept expanding and you couldn't see the the abs. You just couldn't see those abs. You couldn't see those separation. And you're like, oh my goodness, this guy, 
you know, is gone. And that is why he kept hitting the the poses where he thought he was going to score more points, like the most muscular. But Roly Winkler was doing much better than him there. Uh, Sean Roden was pretty smart. He kept hitting, you know, the pose most muscular this way. So he looked like a perfect V taper. I was surprised that Sean Roden was daring to compare himself with his back pose because the back pose was where Phil Heath was really good. So, but Sean Roden was not afraid. He kept showing his back. Um, and Phil Heath tried to dominate, uh, you know, the, the free posing uh, routine by showing his back constantly. But you just knew it. That Phil Heath, you could just see it on his face. Phil Heath knew that he was running a very thin line, very, very thin line. And I'll tell you, I would just glue to the bloody uh, internet. I was like, oh, what's going to happen? I have never been so nervous in my life. My heart was like uh, pounding. I was like, oh, this guy, is he going to win or is he not going to win? He has to win or I'm going to shout and scream. In fact, I was watching the comments. People said, I'm going to give up watching the Olympia. I'm going to give up bodybuilding. I'm never going to see it. I'm not going to believe this shit again. And I was like, uh, has he done it? Has he done? So when it was the fourth place um, winner, I think it was Brandon, uh, no, uh, Brandon Curry, I think, uh, not too sure. The third place winner was Wally Winkler. And I was like, oh, Rolly Winkler, did he do it a second? You know, I was just thinking maybe Rolly Winkler came in second. Maybe, maybe there's a possibility. Maybe he can make it over. So, you know, it could be anyone's game. But Rolly Winkler got third. Then I was like, Sean Rolly, oh, my goodness, who's going to do it? I was looking at both of them. I was like, maybe if they look at the three-dimensional, like if you see his arms, if you see his shoulders, if you see his back, he has done it. But if you look at the abs, if you look at, you know, the presentation, the aesthetics, the the... The complete proportion, it's Sean Roden. I, I was like, so who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? And the minute they said Sean Roden, I was like, oh my God, fuck. It's like, oh goodness. I was, uh, oh my God. It was it was that way. I mean, now Philly Heath is going to be smashed. He's going to be thrashed. He's going to be hit. You know, the critics and the trolls are going to have a field day bashing Philly Heath. They are going to make memes of Eeyore with Phil Heath. Eeyore beat Phil Heath. They're just going to make memes out of this. And Phil Heath is going to suffer the insult for the next year or for the rest of his life. Calling that guy, you look like Eeyore. Or talk is cheap, you know, this one. Talk is cheap, you know. And he got bit slapped for that. So, in as much as, you know, I want to, you know, gloat over Phil Heath. I feel bad for the guy. The poor guy wanted to go eight times. I really feel bad for him. But he shot himself in the foot by saying, you know, talk is cheap. Now that's going to that's gonna haunt him for the rest of his life. And, you know, he looked like Eeyore. Calling him, calling Sean Roden, you look like Eeyore. Man, now people are going to have a field day. So these are my thoughts as to why Sean Roden won or why Phil Heath lost the 2018 Olympia. Man, it was a competition. You must watch it. Sheesh, you must watch it. So give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, I'm right, whatever. I'd just love to hear your thoughts. And like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, thumbs down. And I had to give you this subject. <laughs> it was crazy. And this is me signing off for now. Take care, guys. Bye.